They're on a mission to honor the surviving members of the segregated baseball leagues by sharing their stories and contributions with as many people as possible. They Stepped Up to the Plate was created by daughter-father team, Michaela and Jeff Klein. They've been working together for the past few years, finding ways to celebrate these unsung heroes so that their legacy will live on. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks for having us. You've been very busy um, planning your events. And Michaela, this all started when you had a school project in the second grade that you needed help with. What, tell yeah. us about that. So um, during Black History Month and um, when I was in second grade, we were learning about like Ruby Bridges and Rosa Parks. And so I wanted to learn more about them. And so I decided I came home one day and I asked if I could write a letter to Ruby Bridges. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty much how it started. And you wrote a letter, mm -hmm. quite a long letter. Yeah, about two and a half pages, I think. Uh -huh. What did you say in the letter? Did you have questions for her? I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a while, right? Yeah. But it was that moment that kind of sparked a, a light bulb for, for you, Jeff, that yes. you, know, you realized she can write a letter and actually talk to these <laughs> heroes um, in, in history. So what happened next? Uh, I jumped on the opportunity to teach her more about civil rights, but I wanted uh -huh. to do it through the eyes of baseball. Uh -huh, you're a big so, baseball fan, yes. big collector. So I, I took out the baseball cards I had of players that started in the Negro Leagues, guys okay. like Willie Mays, Satchel Paige, Hank Aaron, Larry Doby, and I showed her the baseball cards, but I had also been, for about 10 years, I'd been collecting Negro League autographs for the guys that played segregated baseball but didn't get a chance to go to the majors. Okay. So I showed her all those autographs as well, and I was proud of the collection, and, mm -hmm. and that's the extent of where I was going to take it until she mm -hmm. looked at me, and she goes, she goes, Daddy, why don't you write letters too? Uh -huh. And up until that point, it hadn't dawned on me that I could actually right. correspond with these pioneers. Right. So I started doing my research as well, and then... I started writing letters, and uh -huh. now I've written, um, I, I Hundreds, stopped counting right? at 300. Right. I've written over 300 letters now. Who was your first now. letter to? Um, Bill McCrary. Okay. It was Bill McCrary, and um, he's he, he wrote back, and in the envelope, what we send um, uh, index cards uh -huh. and ask them to sign the to sign the index card with their their name their team name and the years they played and then I sent them an extra card and I asked them to share a favorite memory okay and when I open up the envelope whenever we get a return we open up the envelope together and I let Michaela pick <laughs> pick which autograph she wants and but he put a post-it note inside the envelope and he said give me a call and I'll tell you some mm -hmm. of the things that happened so and Michaela you've been involved in the collecting as well yeah Okay, and so from that phone call, then a, a whole new idea was born. Is that right? Yes. Um, <laughs> we, we, I talked to Bill the first time I talked to him. I thought he was going to give me maybe five minutes on the phone, and uh. I was on the phone with him for about forty-five minutes. And his stories were absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And I've read a lot about the Negro Leagues and some of the stuff that I've heard from the players that played in the nineteen fifties. There's no documentation about it, so okay. Mikhail and I decided that we were going to take it a step further, and what initially started as just a selfish way for us to collect <laughs> autographs and teach my own kids about civil rights um, evolved into an event mm -hmm. called They Stepped Up to the Plate, and that's when we decided we were going to invite these players to Rochester to share their stories with the community. Mm -hmm. And that was back in yes. 2015, and yes. so um, there were three other players or two other players that joined? Uh, besides Bill McCreary, right. we had three. We had. Okay. Do you remember who they were? Uh, Dennis Biddle, Ray Knox, and Ike Walker. What were some of the stories that they shared with the crowd? Oh. I think they had a lot of messages about like overcoming challenges. Is that right? Yeah. What was your favorite part about about that event? I liked um, listening to um, like. All, all of the different kinds of stories that they had about when they played baseball in the mm -hmm. Negro Leagues. And it's nice to hear those stories in person, right? You can read yeah. a letter or um, look at pictures, but really like hearing those stories in person is probably kind of the point um, that their story could, could live on. How was the community reaction to, to this event that you held? It was a packed room, yeah. right? We had about 300 people at the event. Wow. And they, uh, the feedback that we got was, um, and I can tell one, you know, one of the players lives locally, Ike Walker, and if you 
watch the event, you can tell while he's talking, it was very therapeutic for him to share some of the stories. And right. as it turns out, I, I actually went to high school with Ike's sons, um, David and Dennis. And uh, Dennis came up to me after after the event, and he looked at me and he goes, I saw, he goes, I saw you crying up there. Uh, and I denied it. I go, I wasn't crying. Mm -hmm. He goes, yes, you were. I go, how could you not? I go, did you listen to that, the stories? Right. Uh, very, very emotional. And, and when I got to talk to more people from the audience, I found out that a lot of the audience members were in tears as well as these guys mm -hmm. um, shared shared what they dealt with you know during the days of segregation right and, and this was a big event to organize and Michaela you had a real hands-on role <laughs> in this what is it your your peers at school what did your teacher say about this work that you're doing we would always have like show and tells in second and third grade so whenever I would have a show and tell I would always bring in like a letter I wrote or card that got signed by one of them mm -hmm. and they always thought that it was pretty interesting it is. That's definitely not your average show and tell <laughs> item, right? Do you have a favorite item or letter, photo from a player? Um, was it that sent a big container? Oh, um, the big box. Yeah. That was Hen Henry Bird Clark. Yeah. Um, Henry Bird Clark sent like a care package kind of thing, and it wow. had like t-shirts in it, and like um, it had one picture, and he signed it for one for me, and one for you, right? Mm -hmm. I bet you weren't expecting that. Yeah. So what is his story? Um, he didn't. He, he played for the Kansas City Monarchs okay. in 1953. Okay. And he retired from baseball and settled down in, in Florida. In fact, we went to visit him when we were in a trip okay. to Florida and we called him and he and, his, he and his wife had us over to their house for a couple hours and we got to see his trophy room and you know he wow. shared all those. That's one of the things we find that the players that, that open up uh -huh. are very, very proud of their accomplishments and sure. I think they understand what their contribution was to baseball and civil rights. Mm -hmm. And those are the guys that you know we want to, to continue sharing their stories because you know the, the sobering downside to it is that you know these guys are all in their 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the oldest player that we heard back from was 103 years old. Wow. And Unfortunately, we, 12 of the guys that we've heard back from have since passed mm -hmm. away. But the upside is that you know, there were about 7,000 players that played segregated baseball, and there's, there's only about between 100 and 200 of them left alive, mm -hmm. and we've heard from 75 of them now. Mm -hmm. and, and so the timing of your work is very critical. They want, they want to tell their stories, which is why we decided to create They Stepped Up to the Plate. That is excellent. What has the community reaction um, been so far? Uh, the community reaction has been amazing. We mm -hmm. funded the entire thing through uh, through a GoFundMe uh, campaign okay. the first time around, and we were able to raise we, we raised over five thousand dollars in community contributions in in about three weeks. Wow! This time um, we we increased our goal because we found out we f we fell a little bit short, and, mm -hmm. and that was fine because we wanted to bring these guys in no matter mm -hmm. what and make it a special event for them. But this time around. We increased the goal, and we were able to supplement what we couldn't raise through GoFundMe. Through a, we actually did a, a fundraiser okay. with raffle items and silent auctions. Great, Michaela. Um, after the the event, there was an opportunity for kids and adults to go meet the players in person and and get their autographs. Yeah. Um, what was that like for you? I thought it was cool. Like there was a big line of a bunch of people that brought things so they could get it signed by them. And I thought that it was cool that so that many people were interested in it, mm -hmm. and that they like, well, yeah, had questions. Yeah. What what questions do you ask when you're when you're learning about a player? Well, I always like learning about like the, their story and like how like the struggles that they had to go through mm -hmm. to just to play baseball. Yeah, what? How does that? How does that make you a better person when when you hear their stories? Maybe when you see that other people have these challenges and that they've overcome um, so much, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. And Jeff, do you have a favorite uh, piece of memorabilia at your house? Uh, well, actually, Michaela has it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you claimed um, it. <laughs> we, we created an award called the um, the Jim Zapp Courage Award. Okay. And Jim Zapp was a player who actually played segregated baseball with Willie Mays. Okay. And we have since become friends with um, 
Jim, Jim Zapp's son, James, who's mm -hmm. a retired sergeant major from the Army. And um, we had to have the family's blessing in order to create this award. Unfortunately, right. Jim has since passed away. He died last year. Mm. But the award lives on. And he, he struggled to, to make the team once Willie Mays mm. joined the team. It was hard for him to stay in the outfield with you know young Willie Mays on the team. Mm -hmm. So he fought back. And he got his place in the outfield again next to Willie Mays, displaced another player. And then later on in life, when we were doing this event, we found out that he was in end-stage Alzheimer's and he was fighting for his life. So I talked to James, his son, and asked if, you know, could we name the award mm -hmm. after his father? And he said the family would be honored if you guys would do that. So a couple months later, we get a package in the mail and it's addressed, it's addressed <laughs> to me. But I open it up and it's for Michaela. Uh. So it's a, a he he sent a, an autographed baseball signed by Willie Mays. Wow! And so and he also sent um, some of the players. A few players had uh, Heartland statues made. Okay. And Jim Zapp was one of the players, and um, they would have him autograph the base of the statue. Mm -hmm. And he he mailed a statue and the Willie Mays ball to us. So the Willie Mays ball is <laughs> up on her shelf. So you've claimed that for your own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very really proud of that. Yes. And you have two little brothers, yeah. and one of them is a baseball player himself. What does he think of all of this, all these letters coming in and meeting all these players? Um, well, my brother, CJ, um, he, he's always very interested in mm -hmm. like the event and planning it and everything like that. And um, There's a little dispute right now. Well, Tell her what the dispute is. What? About who's who's talking? Oh, at the event. He's at an oh, age now where yeah. he wants oh, to do what okay. Michaela did. They stepped up to the plate. Will be held from 5:30 to 8 on Thursday, July 13th, at the Thomas P. Ryan Center. And for more information and updates on future projects and events hosted by the Kleins, be sure to follow them on social media at Facebook.com/slash. They stepped up to the plate. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Citywise. I'm Tiana Stevens, and we'll see you next week. Opinions expressed by guests appearing on CityWise do not necessarily reflect those of the host, WXXI staff, or any entity of or affiliated with the City of Rochester. If you have questions, comments, or program suggestions, contact CityWise at 311 or 428-1201 or send us an email at citywise at cityofrochester.gov.